This is a meeting of the Douglas Cemetery Commission. Um, today is Thursday, August 29th, at 10 a.m., Municipal Center. And the meeting is called to on order. Attendees are Lee Lyings, our financial reporter, and Sarah Geeman, our secretary. I am Betsy Youngsma, the president, mm, chairperson. That's a better word. Um, Treasurer's report. Um, well, because of all the rain, we've had a lot of mowing. And that's right. And I, I, I can justify it because I've been mowing my own lawn about um, twice a week, <laughs> in between raindrops. Um, so, consequently, our budget is down to. $5,313.83. And we're only in the second month of the fiscal year. So that'll give us how many more mowings? Um, I believe it's, uh, let's see, four. Okay. We, we may make it, you know, if, it's, if it doesn't keep raining and the weather gets cooler, but, um, we would ask for, you know, more money if necessary. Okay. So it's not a problem, but um, I think that in the future that might have to be increased. Yeah. Our, our budget just because of years like this when it rains a lot. And, yep. And other little things that come up, like we had the cleaning chemicals that we bought for the uh, cleaning of the headstones. Yeah. I mean, that, that was minuscule compared to the, the mowing cost, but um, that's where we're at. So um, hopefully it's only two or three more mowings. Okay. Do they have like a certain Amount. month that they usually stop mowing in, or do they? Like I think they they, they, they just, mow through fall, or? They, I don't think they mow through fall. No, no. They, they, they stop when it starts getting, you know, chilly. But yeah. I, but they, they play it by eyeball. I, I think they, they drive by and look. Right. Because the, 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 the man that actually mows our cemeteries lives in Douglas. Right. And um, in fact, he lives very close to me, so I, he waves to me every day. But um, so, and, and he does a fantastic job. I, I, I can't praise him enough going around those headstones and stuff. You know, and he yeah, even does out, outside on the, you know, on the other side of the wall with the weed whacker and yeah. it takes him two days just to do it. Do that mo that yeah. mowing. But, but I will keep an eye on it. Okay. All right. Okay. Secretary's report. Um, so the only correspondence I had this month was uh, a message uh, email from uh, Jennifer Larson in the assessor's office uh, regarding uh, the burial ground at Mantrog Pond and I sent her in your direction because I know she was looking she had a question on the mapping um, so I, um, I asked her to reach out to you because I think you probably know that burial ground the best since I know you were working on all the smaller ones. Well it confused me at first because it said ancient Oh, right. I was trying to think ancient. How old is ancient? 30 years? <laughs> 3 million years? You know, with the Neanderthals in there? Right. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know if, um, if she got in contact with you, but... She did. <laughs> okay. I think it was the Carter Cemetery oh, that's down okay. there. Which now, where is, is that one? Because Lee and I were trying oh. to figure that one out, and I it's wasn't sure. 18 Bigelow Road. Oh, okay. Most of those are private roads, so it's very hard to get down there to find anything oh. because there's no markings. Um, it's very narrow to drive down mm -hmm. and rocky. Everything's oh. washed out. The water is probably high. And it, it, it appears that the cemetery is surrounded by uh, buildings, right? The, it, the cemetery that is down there is on someone's land. 
Okay. And also, I think it's on another person's land as well. And it's also down by the water because that is a man-made pond. That's not a natural pond. That was flooded. So parts of that old cemetery tend to be underwater at some point. Oh. Oh. Um, How many are buried there, do you know? There are four listed, but I do think that there were probably more at one time. So it's kind of like a family yep. cemetery. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I think they're trying to figure out how to put it on the map. I think they tabled it for this year because they're so close to their deadline. Mm. They needed to get the ones that they actually knew on. Oh. Um, so hopefully it'll go on the next one, which I think is in 2025. All right. Well, the, I haven't heard anything since, so. Thanks. Hope that covers it. Right. <laughs> Yes, that answered my curiosity. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Um, so that was all for my correspondence. Um, your, sec your secretary. How about what, the, uh, the the dead tree in Pine Grove? Did I had that taken oh, care okay. of? Okay. <laughs> all right. Awesome. It's that's, gone. Is it that's, gone? Yep. Okay. That's a great update. <laughs> I, con I contacted John Ferno before he left the highway. <laughs> Yep, uh, that's right. And um, w within a week, um, it was gone. It was gone. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. And thanks, John. <laughs> yeah, thank you, John. He was wonderful, always helpful. Yep. And that's very true. Yep. <laughs> and good luck being the fire chief. <laughs> right. <laughs> All so right. So that's the end of that. Black yeah, so the dead tree is removed. We'll check that off our list. <laughs> so Blackstone Valley Heritage Corridor uh, recap. So um, we went down. Um, they did come down for one day. Um, the morning they came down was actually, we had the severe thunderstorms um, in the morning. Tor tornado and warning. We had a tornado warning to the north of us. So the coordinator, the Blackstone Valley coordinator, decided that it would be better if we actually set up uh, the volunteer tent and stayed closer to that road that passes through the cemetery um, in case we had to make a hasty exit. Um, so uh, Ross had brought some hoses, and we kind of just stayed in the area closest to the road there, um, you know, on the forward side. Now I'm not sure what street that is that passes by that way, but we were um, not on the side where the brown house is, but closer to the other side. Southeast Main. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we were down there. Um, and thankfully the weather did clear up by, you know, a little while after we got going. So we actually had some decent weather too. Um, and Molly estimated uh, that they cleaned about, her rough estimate was 270 of the stones. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they, a lot. they predicted yeah. 100. Quite so. a lot, <laughs> right. <laughs> so we definitely exceeded our, our estimate of 100 stones. And uh, out of the four gallons of D2 that we ordered, we used about three, so we have about a gallon left. Uh, at the end of the event, I uh, poured all of the, whatever was left in the people's spray bottles, I poured them back into the gallon um, so we could save that. So we have a gallon left. Uh, I took all the brushes home to clean them because they were all kind of grungy. Um, and uh, so I think overall the invoices were about 34411 um, for everything that we bought for the event and that didn't include the buckets and brushes which I actually bought on my own and Lee split the cost with me and that was about $50. Uh, oh, that's pretty so, good. Yeah, and so uh, we do have that that gallon left. Um, so Yeah, and I'm, I'm volunteering to go down and clean up a few more. Clean up yep. <laughs> a couple of days. Yeah. You know, a couple in my spare time. Okay, here and good. And I think we also should look into getting volunteers. Like um, we were talking about either the Boy Scouts, the um, seniors at the high yep. school, they, they do projects. Yep. Or we could designate a day for um, cemetery 
headstone cleaning. Yep, we could do that. And uh, put it at the, on the sign at the firehouse. And any volunteers come down, we will su supply the gloves and all, the brushes and all that. But we, if we're going to do that, we should order more chemical to, to clean with. Okay. Yep. So that's uh, that's an idea for in the near future if we want to. And fall's a good time to do it. I yeah. Yeah. I think as long as I think you can use that. I'm, I'll have to check on the bottle and see like what temperature you can use the cleaner down. Oh yeah. Because I, I think I want to say it's about 50 degrees. So I mean, we might have some cool fall days, but I don't think. Uh, I think we still got a few enough, more. Yeah, yeah I think few more. Yeah, <laughs> a few we, more. Uh, we haven't had Indian summer yet. <laughs> right, right. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a good idea. You know, if we could get some some local volunteers to come down. Yeah, I would think people would go for that. I'd like to do that with a small group, and I actually got a couple of um, like uh, gardening tools from the free group. So. I got two of them, um, so that way you don't have to, you know, kneel on the ground or sit on the ground. So it's a little more comfortable. There's two of them, so I'm willing to share those if anyone. Oh, the kneeling pads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Right, and so I think we had actually 12 volunteers. They had estimated we'd have like six or seven. Uh, on the day of, it was actually 12, so that was good. And uh, thanks again to Ross Weaver and Molly Cardoza for putting that together with us. Hmm. And the. Um did all did the um, the water sources that were not working with were, were they working the, um, the day you cleaned? We, we only used we had um, like a hose set up and we only hooked up to one of the nearest like pumps and that one worked fine throughout the day. So because I, I I also went to the um, water and sewer department oh, and they yeah. were going to go down and make sure they were all working. So. Oh okay. okay awesome. Because there was two working and two not. Yeah, right. The, huh. the when day we, we first had went, it the did our walkthrough, you know. Right. Yep. And I still have all the marking flags too. So if we ever want to have an event, we can go back the day before. Yeah. You know that would. And mark them. Yeah. Yep. We oh, might. Good. We might need to get that gentleman back to tell us which stones are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are good to to be brushed and good and not. Right. Mowing contract putting out to bed. I update. don't actually have any updates on that. I um, no. I think we're fine with what yeah, we have. Yeah, we're, you know. I think so too. I mean, this is a, a this is an extremely um, large number of mowings f for any year. So it is right. Um, I don't think we we will go over that. What is it? Ten thousand, even with. The, extra mowings, but I think we don't have to worry about that at this time. Okay. And I had buffer zone update on there just because I couldn't remember if we uh, had anything new nope, on that. No, we or don't. That's, we don't. Okay. No, nope, but that's going to take a lot more thought than right. I have time for right now. Okay. <laughs> and last meeting's minutes. I typed them up this morning, so uh, let yep, me know. Yep, I read them. If I missed anything. <laughs> Nope, I don't think you did. No, so great job. I approve them as written. I uh, second. Yep. So I think we're all set. All right. Do we have any other odd topics, or are we all good? Uh, I, I do. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yesterday I went to the town uh, to here, um, and I want to look into getting a company or if if you guys know anybody that um that repairs the headstones do you know for like the ones that are broken the ones that are yeah. broken um, that are leaning that are you know i know i know of a couple of volunteers in rhode island that have done it but they they're not like a company they're just kind of like a group that will go out and yep. you know do but i don't know if they come to massachusetts i could reach out in that group they have yeah, a group if you on could Facebook. ask i i i heard that there's actually companies that mm -hmm. specialize in cemetery repair yeah we there. could we could like look into that so as well i don't know if what um what we need to do if we're gonna pursue this 
is to get an estimate of what it would cost. And then we have two, um, two accounts. The cemetery perpetual care, yep. which, oh, the cemetery perpetual care and the other account is sale of the lots. Yep. And in the sale of the lots, we have $16,700. Yep. In the cemetery perpetual care, we have $43,000. Okay. And I'm looking to pull out of one, uh, one of these accounts to cover the cost of mm -hmm. repairing the stones. Okay. Okay. However, we're um, trying to figure out whether we need to go before the town meeting. Mm -hmm. Or just we do because I think it's only allotted for certain things. Well, I got a printout which I will show you guys. Maybe you can have copies um, of how it's written, and it's mm -hmm. very vague. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, supposedly with one of these accounts, it's for maintenance, and one is for perpetual care. Now, what what is the difference between maintenance and care? I, you know, that's. Um, and one you have to go before the town meeting mm -hmm. to get it approved, and one you can just, um, years ago it was one you could just um, put in your, the, the estimate and, and present it to the Board of Selectmen and they would approve or disapprove it. So, um, if, we're gonna, if, if we're gonna pursue the uh, re repair of the stones, it, and it has to go before town meeting. That would be in the late fall. Mm -hmm. But okay. it has to be put on the agenda by the end of September. Yeah. Okay, so what I'd like to do is um, find out if there's a company or two out there and see what they, their price would be. If they'd come in and give us a free estimate, look at, you know, just um, the... Um, Douglas Center Cemetery first and see what you know what really needs to be repaired the, the most and what the cost would be mm -hmm. and maybe get a couple of companies to how many stones are we looking at that I don't know I mean but I, I thought there was only a couple but when walking around and putting mm -hmm. those flags on this that there's a couple hundred I, oh yes right. there's at least <laughs> a couple of hundred yeah. and I know there is there's um there's at least a few in Pine Grove too. Yeah. Uh, there's one row where like it's a family plot and almost the entire row has been broken in one way or another. Um, and they're gorgeous. They're like really, they were really tall and I don't know if that contributed to their breakage or not, but they, you know, they're, they're uh, in rough shape. And there's also a Civil War veteran who um, died as a prisoner of war. Wow. And his stone is currently in two pieces, uh, kind of leaning on each other. And it was a really fancy, you know, nice stone that his family picked out for him. Um, and so that one definitely, uh, I would, you know. Put at the top of the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Because it's a really nice one and, you know, definitely um, being. Had to being, determine, though. Who, yeah. Who deserves fixing? Right. Who doesn't, I know. Though, right. It is. You know? <laughs> Well, Especially where we have so many to choose from, you know, yeah. it's like I don't know how you would decide. And then we also have the the pieces that you inventory, mm -hmm. that right. pieces of stone. Yep. And the headstones, yep. That, you know, maybe maybe the company that comes in, they'll find half stone somewhere that would right. correspond. Right. If we had one of those, um, like they have like a tool that you can kind of probe the ground with um, to look around, you know, for the, the pieces, a lot of the times the, the broken pieces will be under the dirt because right, yeah, you know because the passage of time and they kind of just get sunken down. Yeah. Um, I actually did a little recovery at one of the Rhode Island cemeteries where we were poking the ground and digging and finding the bottom halves of headstones that had been knocked over. So um, if we had one of those pokers, we could do a little looking around. Yeah, because I know where a couple of those footstones go, and then there's the question of do we want to put the footstones back? Because I know that makes it harder for the 
the mowers to get around, you know, then they're kind of aiming between footstone and headstone. But um, yeah, so <laughs> another thing we could do. Well, I think we first we should start out and see if there is a company yeah. or individuals that do that. They do that. Right. And see what the, you know, because I have no idea what the cost mm -hmm. would be. And, right. You know, it's probably, it's probably not a, it's probably pretty high. I don't know, but. Right. I mean, even if we could plan to do like a couple a year or, you know, like just <laughs> to, to get us on the right path. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know, and it's very hard to choose which ones deserve being repaired and which ones maybe don't. Right. With you know, how do you many, choose? Right. You know. Well, if they, I'm, if it's a broken stone and it's completely unreadable um, mm -hmm. and illegible, you can't. There's you no sense know. in putting right. it back. You know. There are some that are lying on the ground. Yeah. Um, half buried. Right. Um, that you can read. Um, there are a lot in the Douglas Center Cemetery mm -hmm. on one of the hills that are all tilted. Oh. And they could fall over with a slight push. A, you know. So, I mean, those probably should be shored up. Right. At some point. This, there's a, the part of the stone wall over on the left hand side that, that looks like it had been hit probably should re be repaired or rebuilt in that little section. I mean, this is a, a lot you can do. Yeah. Um, but even lifting the stones that have fallen over up is, is monumental. Right, that's that's why I I'm assuming this companies that mm -hmm. right a lot that of them do that. probably need a, like one of those tripod things yeah. that they have where they can hoist the stone up. Right. Uh, yeah. So you'd have to have the right equipment for doing that kind of thing, <laughs> um, for sure. You could contact Whitensville Monument Works. There's a place in Whitensville that sells monuments right next to the bank down on 122, um, and see if anybody repairs stones if they know of anybody that repairs stones yeah um there's also i think one in dudley that um does monuments um the one in uxbridge is gone there's one in um hockington holliston yeah i know there's a guy that's affiliated with the atlas named i think his name is like john Ap i want to say apnel or something um he does uh, like kind of like tours of different states repairing monuments and I don't know if they'd have any contact because I know um, like you know he uses the special kind of epoxy that you need for marble and and whatnot um, so yeah I don't know if they'd have any any contacts of people around here that do that? I th I want to say I think he was out of Connecticut, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But I'll see if I can look him up as well. Maybe. Okay. Sounds good. Just yeah. to kind of, you know, if we can get the ball rolling on, right. and we can figure out how we can use these accounts yeah. to to this. I mean, there's, been a, there's a lot in there that had been repaired at one time. Yeah, right. I you noticed a few. Glued and, right. Yep. I noticed a few that yep. were looked like they'd been repaired at some point. Yep. yep. All right. So, anything else? Anyone has any other topics? <laughs> anything else, Lee? Not that I can think of right now. Okay. But I would call Whitensville Monument Works, see if they know of anybody that repairs them. Maybe yeah. they repair them. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask around. We'll finger it out. Yep. Yeah, there's also the Association for Gravestone Studies up in Greenfield. You can get a membership to it. Um, they might have a list of people that do that too. You could probably contact them. 
Association. Yeah, that's a good idea. Association for gravestone studies. Oh, right. And they're in Greenville? They're in Greenfield, yep. Greenfield? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trees all look good? Yep. Not good. I think so. <laughs> no poison ivy. Mm, well, not that I've heard about, but I think there is probably some out there. Oh, but gosh, <laughs> we were very careful of it at the volunteer issue. event. Yeah. yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> we did give fair warning to everyone that it was on some of the trees, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much you can do about that. All right. Well, if that's all, I'll make a motion to adjourn at uh, 1027. I second it. Approve. I, I agree. Approve. Okay. <laughs>